Hello, my name is Clive Young and I'd like to introduce the ABC Learning Design Method developed by myself and my colleague Natasha Perovich from UCL Digital Education. Now this method was uh, developed around about 2015 by myself and Natasha as a way to engage with programme and module teams in order to develop designs or, or redesign of courses. We wanted to be fast uh, method, uh, people have got very limited time, to focus on the uh, students' activities and a very student-centred method and the was really to encourage better pedagogical conversation and at the end of the workshop have a consensus of what the design of this particular course or module might look like. The outcome is very practical. We have a storyboard which is a visualisation of the student's journey and an action list that participants can take away with them and try to uh, implement the changes they've made. It works pretty well across all disciplines and we now have a online as well as a face-to-face -face, uh, option. It's used for new programmes uh, and modules, usually post-validation. We get the teams together and we work on their, on their new programmes. But also, and, and probably actually sometimes quite often, we do a program review, uh, modules or programs been running for a while and we go back and have a look at them and sometimes involve students as well, like students to come in and see how the program worked and how we could perhaps improve it. I'll use it for short courses and, and MOOCs and particularly now we have a focus on designing for blended and online learning. This was always part of ABC, but obviously in the current circumstances, it's become even more important. Behind ABC is a pedagogical framework called the Conversational Framework, developed by Professor Diana Lorillard of UCL's Institute of Education. And what we've done really is operationalized her theories and by focusing on these uh, types of learning which she uh, identified. Types of learning become the building blocks of a course design. And it should be noted from the outset that learning is uh, represented by these uh, six uh, types of activities and five of those are what you might call active learning. So there's a real focus on active learning and, and a move away from passive acquisition in the process. It also uh, encourages blended learning uh, as we go through the designs, on the, certainly on the face-to-face uh, -face version. People can choose activities from the backs of the cards which represent both conventional and digital technologies with a kind of emphasis nowadays on moving a little bit more into the uh, digital environment. The student journey itself is built up from these sequences and combinations of cards to produce uh, the storyboard which as I say is a representation of the student's journey. The schedule of the workshop both face-to-face -face and online is quite strict. We go through quite quickly. We can get a workshop done between 90 minutes and two hours, but uh, we can produce some quite good stuff uh, in that very short time. One of the earlier activities we do is tweak your module and we encourage the module teams to represent the uh, or summarize the, the, the essence of their module in a very short number of words. It's a tweet size um, activity. And that's very effective to get people focusing and working together as in a team and deciding what they really want this module to be about. We have a little bit of discussion on the different types of learning that that module might uh, represent, again both in the face-to-face -face and the online one. And again that's a very rich uh, discussion about uh, different types of activities and it encourages people to think about the variety of things you can do uh, within any course. The main thing, as I say, is for uh, the groups themselves to discuss and collaborate and produce together and come up with a consensus. There's a lot of exchange of practice, a lot of kind of good ideas come out of there, uh, but at the end of the day we try to get an action plan where people can take those ideas forward. In the live event, you know, here and there, there's always a great buzz. In the online version, it's, no, you don't get the same buzz, but it's just as effective. We can be very creative in, in thinking about the, about the designs of the courses and the mixture of activities inside that. When it comes to the deciding on the activities themselves, in the face-to-face -face one, we use the cards, you've seen them before, and on the back you can select, or even better, write in the, your own activities that represent each type of learning. On the uh, online one, we use a Learning Designer, which is another UCL tool, which is a lot more precise, actually, in the type of activities, the length of them, the number of students, uh, synchronous, asynchronous, online, offline, teacher presence, and so on. And the nice thing about that is you can export the report into Word or even into uh, Moodle itself. Once you have the storyboard, there's loads of things you can do with it. We always have a look at assessments and feedback. We're using kind of stars and other stickers to uh, represent where that occurs within the student journey. But obviously, uh, module program outcomes are very important. We can map against them. 
already institutional structures such as UCL has a connected curriculum, professional body requirements and so on. We also mentioned, I mentioned earlier that students can get involved in these designs but you may want to incorporate student feedback if a module is being reviewed. There's a chance to have a look at analytics and see where data could be picked up. And of course, nowadays we're really interested in thinking carefully about this online offline mix. But you don't have to design or redesign a whole module. Often it's just when you go through it, there's maybe just some parts that people would like to change. Do you want to substitute the activities or augment them somehow, modify them, redefine them, do something new? And um, we provide various types of support for that. We very rarely say to anyone, you should do this or shouldn't do that, but we just give some more options and we have kind of guides and sheets and so on things to help people decide. We've seen uh, that the um, workshops, uh, particularly the face-to-face -face ones, can be quite scalable. You can get a lot of people in the room doing this type of activity, but they're also very effective. Uh, we know from evaluation, there are quite a few evaluations, the most recent one done uh, last year, part of an Erasmus program. You'd imagine it facilitates discussion and helps a redesign of a course and you can implement strategy or helps implement strategy, all these things you'd expect. One thing we didn't expect, we're very pleased about, is participants report that they feel more confident as teachers when they've completed this, uh, this workshop. And I think it's partly it's the method itself, but also the chance just to chat with peers and, um, and think about some of the kind of activities and pedagogical methods they can use and people find that really encouraging. Even if they don't want to make any big changes in the courses, just validating it with colleagues is a real big step forward. With the um, ABC itself, we're gradually trying to incorporate that more into end-to-end -end design process at UCL, where we support people through early ideas uh, of developing new programs and designing those programs through validation. And then after the validation, module design with ABC uh, then if they wish to go on to learning designer and various types of development support. So we're trying to integrate the whole thing into a much more uh, supported process. We have lots and lots of resources if you're uh, interested in, in using this or lots of things you can look at, but probably most important uh, is to speak to us. Myself, Clive Young and my colleague Natasha Perovich are very happy to speak to you, see how we can help you to uh, design or redesign your own modules and programs.